All right, this is part two. <clears throat> uh, part one for this video will be in the, the description box. In the first part of this video, we went through uh, 1 John chapter 2, verses uh, 15 on verse 27 or 21. Talked a little about uh, in the book of Acts um, about how false converts, that there are two kinds. Those who are ignorant and those who are deceiving and being deceived. And also, to add on to the previous video, turn now into your uh, scriptures in Acts chapter 18, verses 24 on to verse 28. Another example of someone being ignorant of certain ways of God and then being corrected and brought into the right way. Acts chapter 18, verses 24 on to verse 28. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. Knowing only the baptism of John. So he was ignorant past that. Okay? Okay. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom, when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Which we as the church of the living God, having the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation, that is what we are called to do. You see a brother or a sister who is of the church of the living God, who is ignorant on certain things, come alongside them. It's like, hey, can we talk? And you... Of course, go to the scriptures, okay? But yet again, someone who is ignorant, okay? Ignorant. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them much with which had believed through grace. For he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly, showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. So another example of someone being ignorant, okay? And someone of the Church of the Living God correcting them. Of that ignorance okay hence one of the tenets of someone who is a false convert one who is ignorant whether like I said in the previous video whether that's willful or unintentional ignorance okay but the second uh, the second type of false convert okay like I said there's so many out there who think they are saved and they are not because they just believe they're a thief and a robber they went up another way. There are some out there who are ignorant of that, who don't know any better. Okay? Then there are the, this other type. The infiltrators. The ones that come in to just sow discord. Okay? Who come in to just um, wreak havoc. Start strife amongst brethren. For that, go to Jude. Go to the book of Jude. Go to the book of Jude, verses 3, on to verse 8, to start. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you, and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, 
and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil dignities. Mm -hmm. Hence, these infiltrators, these deceivers, that just want to come in, you know, be King James Bible-believing Christians. And all they do is create strife and debate. Want to draw disciples after them. They want to be the superstar. A lot of them seem to have one man in mind as a target. But they don't teach anything. They can't teach because they have not the spirit. These are wicked men. And of whom I named a few of, just a small few, beg your pardon, in the very first video. But these are these men that are with us today. And on that, go to Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. We're going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 15. Now, Matthew chapter 23 is before, obviously, but Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24 is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Matthew chapter 23 is before the time of Jacob's trouble. What is the spiritual condition of the world going to be like? Brethren, you have to remember, with what is coming upon us in this coming upcoming year, 2022, okay? You have to remember the ultimate goal of Catholicism is to bring in that man of sin, the son of perdition, the one who's going to rule the world. Okay, you know, they seek to set up uh, a system that may be ruled by the volition of a single man. Okay, that's what the Jesuits are after. Okay, but see, it's eventually going to lead into a one world religion. It's going to lead into a one world religion that has a trinity, a three person trinity at its foundation. Okay? Okay? So, we need to be aware of this. Well, right now it might not seem as having any religious implications. It has everything to do with a one world religion that is coming. See, you and I as a church of the living God know that. We need to be vigilant in letting them know that. But what is going to be the spiritual atmosphere before the time of Jacob's trouble? Let's read. This is for our instruction and in righteousness. Let us remember. Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 on to verse 15. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes, those who pen things, and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do ye not after their works, for they say and do not. And you look in the, uh, uh, look in the previous video, kind of touch on this. Unto them were committed the oracles of God. Okay? Unto them were given the law. Okay? They had the scriptures. They had the truth. But see, what he says here, all therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. See, they could preach. See, the example is, because they had the scriptures, they could preach something true. But what they did in life didn't match what they preached. They didn't walk their talk even though what they were speaking were true. Remember that. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Typical thing of a Catholic, with their penance and stuff like that. And all these man-made traditions, and all these man-made um, ordinances and stuff like that. Okay? 
but all their works they do for to be seen of men because they have men's persons in admiration okay they make broad their phylact phylacteries aha brother they make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at feast uh, at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues how can ye believe that receive honor one from another and not uh, seeketh the honor that cometh from God only how can ye believe and greetings in the markets and to be called of men rabbi rabbi but be not ye called rabbi for one is your master even Christ and ye are bre and all ye are brethren and call no man father upon the earth father as a religious title these are talking about titles you know the reverend so-and-so the pastor so-and-so okay rabbi so-and-so father Michael <laughs> okay and call no man father upon the earth for one is your father capital F note the difference between lowercase f and capital F there which is in heaven neither be ye called masters for one is your master even Christ but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant again the gifts that are given to you from our Lord people are not to be hoarded onto yourselves to boast up yourself they are meant to be shared given unto others okay and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased and he shall humble and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted hold your place here and go to Luke chapter 18 Luke chapter 18 see these in these last times before the catching away the spiritual atmosphere is going to be so perverse it is very perverse look at these Christians in the church building saying it's the Christian thing to do to take the steel of the Jesuit poniard preaching only love with no judgment and then when you bring truth up to them they bare their teeth and their fangs and their claws Ow! yeah Luke chapter 18 verses 9 on to verse 14 and he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others those who preach this love gospel when you get them when you corner them in this it always comes out self-righteousness and they always blame others self-righteousness and blame others well I was good enough for God to die for I'm good enough something good in me yeah yeah right you keep telling yourself that as you go down to hell yeah two men went up into the temple to pray the one a Pharisee and the other a publican the Pharisee the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself God I thank thee that I am not as other men are extortioners unjust adulterers or even as this public you never run into anybody like this I have I encounter many of them online here I fast twice in the week I give tithes of all that I possess I I I <laughs> And wouldn't you know, there are three eyes in that, aren't there? I, 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 me, me, me. Look at me, look at me. Yeah. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. While this other guy has his hands open. I thank you because you have made me so great. I am so great. I was such a catch to you. And the truly repentant, the humble, Lord, 
Have mercy. I don't deserve it. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Go back to Matthew chapter 5, uh, 5, uh, 23, picking up at verse 13. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Scribes, those who pen things. Scribes, like the guys who make the Bibles, okay, from the Vatican. The scribes of the Vatican who make all the Bibles. Not the scriptures, but the Bibles. And the Pharisee is the one who holds tradition, Catholic, above the scriptures. Okay? Okay? But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. And right there, right there. Now, he said kingdom of heaven. This is for instruction and righteousness. But, okay, kingdom of heaven, like I said in the previous video, actual physical, literal kingdom in Jerusalem, where our Lord Jesus Christ is going to reign with us, 4,000 years, kingdom of heaven, okay? But see, these devils who are deceiving and being deceived, okay? They're here to cause problems. For ye, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. They're not saved. These coadjutors who work for the Vatican, these infiltrators, these false converts, they're not saved. And they're trying to get you tripped up to fall for their doctrines and their lies and their deceit. Because they themselves are not going to heaven. They're not saved. And those who want the truth, to seek the truth, they want to divert you and get you to err from the truth. That's why I pray against easy believism. I pray that God destroy easy believism. Because someone who's seeking the truth, who's having, who's struggling about repenting, hey, I'm no good, then you get some twit, say, oh, just believe. Repentance, oh, that's, that's work, don't worry about it. Just believe and you're saved. So I don't, there's no, nothing, well, a change should come, but hey, don't worry, just believe and you're saved. Damning people to hell. Damning people to hell. The love gospel. God loves you. There was something in you worth God dying for on the cross. You're good enough. Everybody's going to be saved. Damning people to hell. Oh, I, I gave this up, this up, this up. I stopped doing this, this, this. Now I'm going to come to the Lord and he's going to give me repentance because I got rid of damning people to hell. And those who preach these things, easy believism, the ecumenical love gospel. Lordship salvation. Okay? Those three branches are all branches set on fire of hell. And as we see here in verse 15, uh, 13, but woe unto you scribes, those who write, okay? The scribes, the pen, okay? And Pharisees, hypocrite. Pharisee, tradition, scripture, okay? For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye can pass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. I think about these poor young people that Beelzebub of Blackpool, hidden in Lucifer's love, is poisoning with his lies. Okay? His poor pet monkey, the Kraken, you know, faithful servants of Antichrist. Okay? Um, he's one who has been poisoned 
by this devil. Okay? But see, these people, for ye can pass sea and land to make one proselyte. They go all over just so they can get one person to err from the truth, to turn away from the truth onto their lies. Okay? Good example of this. Okay? Go to Acts chapter 15. Uh, Acts chapter 30. Excuse me. Okay? Acts chapter 30. Acts chapter... Not 30, you idiot. Acts chapter 13. Okay? See, these guys cause strife and debate. All the while calling themselves Christians, King James Bible believers. They don't believe the scriptures at all. Oh, they know what it says because it condemns them to hell. Yes. But they have no faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. None whatsoever. They're lost. You're lost. Okay? Acts chapter 13. Just one verse. Verse 50. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. Out of their coast. So the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women. Why? Because they had been, you read the entirety of uh, Acts chapter 13, Paul preached Jesus. And these Jews, the true God of the scriptures, these Jews wanted nothing to do with. So what did they do? Oh, they went to the devout and honorable women. They went to the women. Isn't that interesting? And the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas. See, these infiltrators will go for the big shots, okay? They will. They'll try to go for the big shots. And if they can't go to them, then they go to the lower people. But they will send so many people out to cause strife and debate to raise persecution. Okay? And now go back to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, right here. These they I got to use this as an example. It's the best example that I can give. Okay? I have to use this as an example. Brian Denlinger was on YouTube for many years. He goes over to Rumble, where there's a lot of rumbling going on apparently. I guess. But these devils, who have it in for Mr. Delaner, they followed him to Rumble. And you can see that on Rumble. You can see the people who are going after Mr. Delaner on Rumble. They followed him there. The only way you're probably going to get rid of that man is to shut it off completely. You already know that, though. You already know that. Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. Oh, let's begin at verse 10. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica where they had been previously, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Therefore many of them believed, also of honorable women which were Greeks, and of men not a few. But, see, when the word of God is being preached and people are searching the scriptures, Lives are being converted, okay? New creatures being brought in by Christ Jesus. Conversion, okay? When the scriptures are being taught, when people are preaching the scriptures, okay? And they're searching them, okay? What happens? Verse 13, but when the Jews of Thessalonica, those over here, had knowledge that the word of God was preached by Paul at Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. Which is what these devils do. Like I said, the, the best example to give you is that of Mr. Brian Denlinger, who left YouTube and all the devils went over there to bother him over there on Rumble. Which apparently there's a lot of rumbling going on on Rumble right now. Ugh. 
But this is what these devils do. They're here just to cause problems, brethren. They have no people. People. Okay? These devils have no interest in truth. They have no interest in you. All they want to do is cause strife and debate and draw people away from the truth after them. They want to mess you up. And when you got someone who is preaching truth uncompromisingly, they make that man their target. And they lie, oh, because their, their father is the devil, Satan. Their father is the father of lies. And they lie, oh, they lie. Oh, do they lie. What do you expect? What do you expect? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye can pass sea and land to make one proselyte. If they can, you know, I have always said uh, with doing this, if one person um, is edified, um, uh, edified, uh, rebuked, reproved, corrected, instructed, taught, I know for certain that there are several who came to know the Lord Jesus Christ through the salvation video that the Lord gave me on this channel. I know that for fact. But I have always said, so long as one person receives anything from anything that the Lord would have me to do, then it would be worth it. They have the same mindset, but in the negative way. If they can get one person away from the truth, then they have won. Then they have gained a victory. And that's what they're after. These guys have no, uh, no, nothing for truth. They love not the truth. All they want to do is fight. That's it. That's all they're about. And they are deceitful. Just like their father is. Just like your daddy is, boy. Yeah. Yeah. But they can pass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, he may he make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. And as we see in Acts chapter 17, when these devils hear of the truth being preached, they, they follow, they go. They follow this person. They follow them whenever or wherever. Okay? And like I said, the only example I can think of is how when Mr. Denlinger left YouTube, the devils followed him <laughs> over to Rumble. Okay? <laughs> because that's what they do. That's what they do, people. Okay? That is what they do. Now go to John chapter 8. Go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. We're going to do a little reading here. I hope you can handle it. John chapter 8. Beginning at verse 30. On to the close of the chapter. John chapter 8, beginning at verse 30. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Many believed on him when he spake these words, our Lord Jesus Christ. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, Hold up. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Who is the truth? Who is the truth? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. If ye continue. Okay? If it took. Okay? Many believed on him. But did it take? Let's see. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed. And were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou ye shall be made free? Descended physically from Abraham. Yes. Jesus answered them. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever. But the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free. Ye shall be free indeed. Hmm. Hmm. The truth shall make you free. 
If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Hmm. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, physically. But ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father. And ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Yeah. Jesus said, saith unto them, if, a, if ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth. We have heard, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? even because you cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Then answered the Jews, and said unto him, Say we not, Well, thou art a Samaritan, and hast a devil? <laughs> Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father. And ye do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast the devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. You see what's going on here? How the Pharisees and stuff are responding to him when our Lord was speaking to them truth? We're Abraham's seed. We've never been in bondage. God is our father. We're, we're, God is our father. Now, now we know you're totally God a devil, right? Look at their responses to the truth. Look at the responses of these devils. For those who speak the truth, look at their responses. Hmm. They strain at a gnat and swallow the whole camel. <laughs> they strain at a gnat, just a little thing. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast the devil. Abraham is dead in the prophets. And thou sayest, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Who makest thou thyself? Remember, these same ones who are proceeding in this line of questioning. Verse 30, as he spake these words, many believed on him. Believed on him. Remember that. And now they're, who, who are you? Who do you make yourself to be? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father, my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. <laughs> I, 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 I just absolutely love this. <laughs> 
And he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Look at the reaction. The same ones that believed on him. Many believed on him. The same ones. Then took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out to the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Hence the false converts. You keep coming up with truth. You know, the Lord keeps coming up to them with truth from the scripture. And see, the scripture cuts you, boy. Cuts you deep. It's supposed to. And the more truth that you give to these false converts, the more they fight back, the more they resist. See, someone who is ignorant, but truly seeking the Lord, yeah, that hurt's going to sting, but you're going to appreciate it, and it's going to draw you on to the Lord even closer. But those who are these false converts just here to start problems. More truth, more truth. The more they fight until eventually, like they always do, boom, shoot themselves in the foot and reveal themselves. Can't keep it up forever. Can't keep it up forever. These same guys who believed on him earlier in verse 30 were about to kill him. Why? Because he just called himself the father. Where did he do that? Uh, verse 58. Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. The only thing that an eternal creator could say, I am. I am. What he said unto Moses in Exodus chapter 3. Tell them that I am have sent you unto them. So Jesus took the name of I am upon himself. He just called himself God the Father. And you look at the, uh, and you watch the previous video, he called himself the Father. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Now, while we're here, go to John chapter 9, verses 24 on to verse 34. This is interesting. Then again called they, the, now this is the man who was born blind. Our Lord spat on the ground, rubbed stuff on his eyes, and he's seeing. And he goes before the council, and they're like, ah, how you see? And they didn't believe him, they didn't believe him. So... From verse 24 on, they got his parents in there and asked them. So that's where we're picking up at. Verses 24 on to verse 34, okay? You read the backstory on your own time. Then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. They are talking about Jesus. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. He was ignorant. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Then said they to him, again, What did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and ye did not hear. Wherefore would ye, would ye hear it again? Will ye also be his disciples? Then they reviled him, and said, Thou art his disciple. But we are Moses' disciples. Uh, modern context? <laughs> you say you're of the church of the living God, but we are Christians. We know that God spake unto Moses. <laughs> As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. Right there, that's a fulfillment of prophecy right there. The man answered and said unto them, why herein is, is, is a marvelous thing that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened mine eyes? Now, now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. 
They answered and said unto him, Look at this response. Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. And thou teach us. Uh, verse 57 in, uh, John 9, in John 9. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, where does he say? Uh, verse 53, excuse me. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead? Who makest thou thyself? Who makest thou thyself? <laughs> See, and then you look at verse 34 in John 9. They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. Cast him out. And all this guy did was speak the truth. They didn't want anything to do with it. They were a little uh, high on themselves, weren't they? Weren't they? Yeah, you could say so. Now, let's go to Romans chapter 6. Uh, actually, actually, let's go to John chapter 5. Beg your pardon. John chapter 5. We got time. John chapter 5. No, no, we've already covered this. Beg your pardon, brethren. Beg your pardon. Go to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. See, if you are a new creature in Christ Jesus, you're a new creature. Things will change because you are a new creature. Beware of just having merely a changed life. Okay, these lordship salvationists can have a changed life and not be saved. Okay, got to remember that. See, when the Lord uses you to bring someone unto himself through the Romans road, by the time you reach Romans chapter 5, you're going to know what type of person, spiritual and body, you are dealing with. Someone who is receptive unto the truth, who you can see being broken right before your eyes, or someone who's going to put up the defenses and balk at everything. And then from chapter 5, you lead them on to Romans chapter 10, which the easy believism heretics hate. Okay? And you lead them there. Then you come back here to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 14. You're newly saved, born again, converted, a new creature in Christ Jesus? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. What are we dying to? To the world? Most importantly, unto ourselves. And therein is the important thing to die unto, yourself. Which these devils have no death there. None. They have not died unto themselves. Not at all. Not at all. Let's continue. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. The being a new creature because of the Lord that is in you, changes will come. Absolutely. Because of the Lord that is within you. Beware of those who only have a changed life and aren't a new creature. Beware of that, brother. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, dead unto the world and unto ourselves, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him 
knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members, flesh, as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. And see, the second part of this is, uh, in verse 15, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. See, the first part of this up to verse 15 is for the new convert. Okay? It's like you, you got to, you know, abstain from sinning. It doesn't mean that you stop sinning. Okay? Do you read Romans chapter 7? Okay? There is no such thing as sinless perfection in this life. That's impossible. You've got whack jobs out there who's like, uh, what's his name? Uh, um, comfort. It's like, what about holiness? You know, got to stop sinning. Paul Washer, another guy, talks about stop sinning. Okay? Yeah. That you couldn't do that even if you tried. Okay? But we are to abstain from every all appearance of evil. Okay? Yes, we are to abstain from sin. Okay, we are to turn from sin. That doesn't mean we're not going to sin. We are going to sin, okay? But from verse 15 on are those who are those who say like, well, hey, I'm saved. Why not sin? Because God's grace covers it all. See, it's two different uh, statements here. First one, what shall, we, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, okay? Verse 15, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Okay? This one's like, well, I'm sin. Well, I'm, I'm saved now. So, so what then? Then he's like, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Meaning, basically, that once you are saved, you are a new creature. Something's going to change around here. Absolutely. So, if you are saved and there's no new creature, if new things haven't come, if it's just the old person, spirit, soul, and body, but yet you have taken to yourself some religious rhetoric or some religious stipulation, cause for concern. Whereas verse 15 are those who, like the easy believers and heretics, you shouldn't sin, but hey, don't worry. You're saved because you just believe. So, shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Go ahead and sin. God's grace covers it all. You're good. That's what that is talking about. That's exactly what that is talking about. See, because when someone is truly saved, born again and converted, okay? Galatians chapter 2, I definitely had to come here. Couldn't get away from it, from this, uh, from talking about it in this video. Verses 20 on to verse 21. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ, the Holy Ghost, that seal until the day of redemption, liveth in me. Christ liveth in you, if you are truly saved, born again, and converted. You might be ignorant in something. You might not uh, know the way of God perfectly. How many, let's be honest, brethren, how many of you have talked to those who came to the Lord by a Bible, but then the Lord brought them onto the scriptures and brought them up in the faith. That's how it works. Almost everybody I've ever talked to 
has that experience, okay? So there are things that people are ignorant of, okay? They could be religious, gone to church <laughs> all their lives, think they're saved. And then they come to the scriptures or someone of the church of the living God is sent onto them. And they're like, they're like, what, what, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Something ain't lining up here with me. Then the other one, you're going through the scripture, you're a heretic. You're pre. Oh, what's what's the thing? They're backloading works into salvation. <laughs> that one, that one's funny. Uh, yeah, you you you're preaching works salvation. Okay, you're a you're an ite of some kind following a man. Okay, you're a heretic. But this is heretic, heretic. And then they go around and ba 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 ba, and stalk you, and try to. Bring your name through the mud. Smearing ta uh, campaign and tactics. Just like the late brother Alberto Rivera spoke about in his testimony. Uh, how these uh, devil coadjutors do it. I'll be sure to put that in this video. Definitely. Okay? The difference between these converts. One could be a false convert out of ignorance. Whether it's willful or true. Or a false convert because they are as fake as a $3 bill. What is the discerning factor? It's always the scriptures. It's always the scriptures. And you notice in a lot of these devils, where is your teaching in scripture, hotshot? Tough guy. You can't teach nothing. None of you can. None of you can. There are some out there who at least try. At least try. But the majority of you devils, you can't teach nothing. You can't teach nothing. Because you're not saved. And instead of going through scripture, they revert to schoolyard tactics. These people are children, brethren. These devils, these people that we are going to be dealing with even more pronounced in 2022, which is why we're going about this as we are. Brethren, the falling away are those who say that they are of us, but are being made manifest that they never were of us. That's the falling away. It's going to get worse. And people who you thought that were your brethren are going to turn out to be not. That's what we need to be aware of. That's what we need to be on guard of. Especially going into 2022. Because we don't know. We have no idea what these Jesuits are going to bring out this year. Or next year. Which is going to be in a couple of hours actually. Okay. But now go to Galatians chapter 6. Verses 14 on to verse 16. God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God, prince, prince with God. And with man. That's what Israel means. From henceforth let no man trouble me. For I bear in my body the marks of Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. See, it's a death. At salvation, death is a requirement. You have to die unto yourself. And in dying unto yourself... And having contrition for what you have done to the Lord. And in fear calling upon his name that he may save you. Okay? That's how that works. And when he saves you, you are to be dead unto this world. 
not at gunpoint, remember. And see, the false convert, the one who is ignorant, who wants the things of the world, if they are shown the truth, may the one who is ignorant conform to the truth. But those of the false converts who are deceiving and being deceived, they'll lash out at you. They'll lash out at you. Every single time, brethren. Every single time. And, you know, one of the questions came up, well, how, what, you know, death. You have to die to yourself. But I have said, it's like, well, how do you get people to fear the Lord? Let them taste actual physical death. It could be a very helpful reminder. I know of a certain devil who apparently, uh, apparently had a skin issue that almost brought him to death. And yet he, was, he became 10 times worse than he already was before. Hmm. A little on that. Uh, just, just a little on that. Go to, go to Jeremiah chapter 44. Jeremiah chapter 44. See, near-death experiences, you know, you can be brought to a very low point in your life and then have a religious experience. Okay? But is that religious experience, was that something just of emotional, of an emotional thing? Or was there an actual pricking of the heart? Or was there a cutting of the heart? Which one was it? There's a difference. And we're going to look at that, by the way. Okay? What am I talking about? In Jeremiah chapter 44, Verses 15 on to verse 19 is what we're going to be reading. But you got to remember what led up to this. Before the children of Israel were exiled from their land, before Nebuchadnezzar came and whooped the snot out of them, Jeremiah, Isaiah, and even Ezekiel with those in the captivity, the prophets were warning the people in Jerusalem, in Israel, turn from your wickedness, consider your ways, and turn unto the Lord. But they wouldn't. Our Lord sent them prophet after prophet after prophet, rising up early and sending them, warning these people. But they never took it. Nebuchadnezzar came along, whooped the snot out of them, killed lots of them, thousands of them. Okay? Shed the blood of Israel all over. Just absolutely whipped them. You would think, after such tragedy, that there might come a conversion. You might think, well, hey, you know, we've, we've been through this. Maybe we ought to turn on to the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 44, verses 15 on to verse 19. Now, this is after Nebuchadnezzar came and whooped them. He put Gedaliah in charge and Ishmael came and killed Gedaliah and then all the proud men went and chased Ishmael out and then these, uh, these proud men went to Jeremiah and, uh, and asked him, it's like, hey, pray to the Lord for us and whatever the Lord says, whether it be good or whether it be evil, we're going to do it. Whatever it is. He goes to, uh, the Lord comes to him and he says unto the children of Israel, Jeremiah does, uh, the Lord says, don't go into Egypt. Then these proud men like, Lord, didn't tell you that to not go into Egypt, but Baruch, the son of Neriah, set the Theon against us. And they go into Egypt anyway. It's like, okay, what, else need, what else do you need to get through to these people? With all the death and with all the suffering that they've encountered, these near-death things, who knows how many of their lives were in peril of themselves, but yet there's still this obstinance. That's the backstory. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, in Pathros, answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth. to burn incense unto the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done 
we and our fathers, our kings and our princes, in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of victuals, and were well and saw no evil. But since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven, incidentally, this Queen of Heaven is the Roman Catholic Mary. Okay, just so you know. Okay, let's continue. But since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven, the Roman Catholic Mary, and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things, and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And when we burned incense to the Queen of Heaven, and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes, little round sun-shaped cookies, to worship her, and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men? And then when you break it right down, the, this witcha, as it's called, exalting the female, remember to feminism. It's God, man, uh, child, pet, uh, to the feminists, excuse me. It's God, woman, child, pet, man. <laughs> That's the order unto the feminazi. Hence these religions such as witcha. Okay, which were uh, which make women into gods, and Catholicism worships a woman, the Queen of Heaven, uh, Queen of Heaven, Diana of the Ephesians, Semiramis. But see, now let's let's consider Job. Go to Job chapter one. Job chapter one. See, bringing someone being brought onto a near-death experience and having a religious experience, you need to see how that endures. If, if they, like, do they endure for a while? Because, like I said, I know of, of, of a certain devil that apparently was almost near death, but yet came out of it worse than he was before. Hmm. And you've, I've heard of people who have had near-death experiences. They seek Jesus, but then over time, they just revert back to who they were before. Constantly needing things to excitement, you know, to bring them back. That's not the marks of a true convert. Book of Job. Just, just one verse in Job, chapter 1. Job, chapter 1. Uh, we're not going to worry. Uh, verses 9 on to verse 11. Look at what Satan says in Job chapter 1, verses 9 on to verse 11. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. There are those out there who call themselves Christians only because they have an abundance of things. Things just seem to work out for them. Like today, you know, with all this uh, pandemic stuff that the Jesuits created, okay? Our economy collapses and all these wealthy Christians lose everything. How are they going to react? Are they still going to have the their faith on the Lord Jesus Christ? Or is it a faith because of only what they have? This is what Satan was accusing Job of. And of course, and you read about what our Lord said, um, his own testimony, our Lord's testimony of Job, and the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Oh no, verse 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? A perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. That's God's testimony of Job. And here's Satan, the accuser of the brethren, like all his ministers are, accusers, pointing fingers, right? Here Satan is basically saying, Job only loves you because of the stuff you give him. Take away his stuff and he'll curse you. Of course, that didn't happen. God allowed Satan... To take away everything. 
And on that, verses 20 on to verse 22 in Job chapter 1, Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Did Job make excuses there? Was he saying it was someone else's fault for the way he was? No. No. But then when you look in Job chapter 2, verses 4 and 5, God's like, hey, you asked me to do this stuff on a Job without a cause. And yet he still holds his integrity. Look at this, verses 4 and 5 in Job chapter 2. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin. Yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. There are some out there who can lose everything. Say, hey, I'm still alive, man. I'm, I'm still alive. Go ahead and take that. I'm, I'm alive. I'm alive. Yay. Thank you, Lord. Satan's temptation is. See, Satan was allowed to take everything from Job. Job didn't crack. Satan then is like, okay. Let me make him sick. Let me roll up a sleeve. Hmm? Let me have him breathe in his own CO2 emission. Hmm? Let me get him sick. Let me touch his bone and his flesh. Then we'll really see how loyal, how, how godly this man truly is unto you, Father. <laughs> yeah. And remember, Satan is a created being. God created Satan. And Jesus Christ is the Father. Yeah, get a load of that one. Yeah. And hence, this is what these false converts who are here just to cause strife. They're trying to find something. They're like Satan, the accuser of the brethren. They can't get... Uh, things to be taken from you, then they'll go after your flesh. Because they want to just they want to try to get you to turn on the Lord. And coming, brethren, the further we go, this 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 operation that the Jesuits started is never going to end, brethren. It's not going to end. Oh, they might do away with the diaper, yes. But it's never going to end. It will end for us when we are redeemed. But otherwise, this is never going to end. This is how it's going to be. And the further we go, the more these false converts are going to be coming out of the woodwork. And we, through the Lord, need to discern those who are truly ignorant, wanting the truth, and those like the Beelzebub of Blackpool, hidden in Lucifer's love, the Kraken, Alex Kennis, okay, the Peltiers, uh, Aaron Murray, Darren, Judge, guys like that. Five, five of them I mentioned. Hmm, isn't that interesting? It's those people we have to discern and make aware. It's like, hey, watch out for these devils. Watch out for these devils. Watch out for these devils. If one of them... The Knight of Columbus guy, doubt it. Beelzebub of Blackpool, no way. The Kraken, hopefully. He's still young. Still young. The tragic Scotsman, one could only hope that they actually get saved. They actually get saved. You know, I think about, I mean, think about what, I mean, these devils are using their talents for Satan. Oh, imagine if these guys were saved. Wow. Wow, I know, wishful thinking. Wishful thinking. 
but see as the accuser of the brethren. That's what they do. That's what these false converts do. That's what these infiltrators do, brethren. And see, for someone to truly be saved, there has to be a death. You have to die. Now, as the church of the living God, if you experience death, yes, that helps bring your <laughs> focus. It's like, oh boy, like when I almost died. Got my attention, boy. <laughs> but see, there has to be a death in order for someone to truly be converted. Go to Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. What has to die? Well, your self-righteousness, of course. But what, is, what happens in that self-righteousness? Men can make idols of their opinions, of their ideas, of their dogmas, of their own thing. Acts chapter 26, verses 8 on to verse 23. Here's a really good example of this, of what I'm talking about with you. About what has to die. See, a false convert who is ignorant, okay, when corrected, hopefully they come around unto the truth of the gospel, unto the truth of the scriptures. The false convert who is deceiving and being deceived is going to attack you. And call all his Jesuit coadjutor brothers to attack you as well. Okay? That's what they do. That's what they do. But when the real deal happens, when a conversion and a death comes, what, what, what entails all this? Acts chapter 26, verses 8 to on to verse 23. Why should, there, why should it be thought... Now, this is Paul talking to King Agrippa, I believe it is. Yes. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? God raised the dead. Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. When talking with people, the resurrection of the dead, yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, yeah, Christ is risen from the dead. Unlike the Catholics who say he, that he's still on that cross. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, Christ is risen from the dead, people. I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which thing I also did, I also did in Jerusalem. And many of the saints that I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests, and when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. And I punished them oft in every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme, and being exceedingly mad, mad, not angry, mad, insane, against them. I persecuted them even unto strange cities. We already looked at that in Acts chapter 17. Okay? Paul was exhibiting the same traits that these devils today have. Following people. Going after them. Okay? Being overseas, sending things, uh, information to church buildings about, yeah, I mean, insane stuff. Okay? They go after those who are of the church of the living God. Okay? Just like we read in Acts chapter 17, verse 13 specifically. Okay? Paul was doing that same thing. He was a false convert. He was ignorant. He didn't know. He didn't know. And it says right here, I punished them oft in every, stream, in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly mad, mad does not denote anger, it means insanity. Being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. Verses 11 under verse 14. But I certify you, brethren, 
that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it. Neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For ye have heard of my con conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God, and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. Look at that verse. And profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation, being exceedingly zealous of the tradition of my fathers. Not of the truth, but of the tradition of the fathers. Not of the truth. Okay? And 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. First Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 on to verse 17. And I thank Jesus, Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of whom I am chief. Accountability to God. Responsibility for what he had done. Not blaming other people. That. That. That's. When you're blaming other people for what you have done, <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's their fault I'm like this. Oh, he's the one who made me do this. Really? 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 That If there's ever a red flag for any of you, there's a red flag right there. There's a red flag. I mean, yeah, someone could slip having a bad day, okay, and go off a little. But someone of the Church of the Living God truly converted a new creature, you're, you're not going to constantly be blaming. You might blame someone, but then the Lord, see, who lives in you, he's going to convict you. He's going to rebuke you. He's going to chasten you, okay? And if you mess around with him, he'll hand you over for the destruction of the flesh that the Spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Okay? Someone of the church of the living God will not constantly will not blame other people for his own doings. You can't. Like I said, we got to give credence for someone who might have a weak moment. Might be in weakness. You know? <laughs> not one who's using weakness as a cover. Okay, not one who's playing the victim constantly, using that as a shield to hide behind. No, not that. You can have a weak moment, yes. But overall, someone who is truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you're not going to blame other people. How can you? How can you? If you came to the Lord on his terms, you can't blame other people. What? What? The devil forced you to do it? What? The woman thou gavest me, she did give me of the tree, and I did eat? <laughs> Saved people don't make a habit of making excuses. Saved people don't make a habit of blaming others. For the way they behave. So what? You are a puppet? How does that feel? Hmm? 
How does that feel to be played as a puppet by someone you look up to? Hmm? Why? How does that feel? Make every excuse there is under heaven. But no personal, none of this. None of this. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. That's a, that's a big giveaway that someone ain't who they say they is when they're blaming other people. It's a big sign. Big red flag if there, you know, <laughs> big red flag if there ever was one. How be it? For this cause obtained, I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Long suffering because he was lost at the time before the Lord got a hold of him and converted him. Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And amen. Amen to that. And John chapter 16. John chapter 16. Brethren, going forward, we have to remember of what is coming on the horizon. The pandemic is not going away. It's not going anywhere. The Jesuits have to keep this thing alive. Okay? And uh, January 1st, uh, here in America, uh, new laws come into effect in all the states of the Union. You look that up on your own time, uh, what laws are being uh, brought into effect in your state here in America. Okay? But you got to remember, I mean, these people are all right now all about this love gospel. It seems that the love gospel is the one that is pervading or being uh, predominant of the three strains of heresy that are out there. And there are more than that. Don't get me wrong. But these are the big three. Easy believism. Save yourself by your belief. You're good. Everybody's going to save you. God loves everybody and going to save everybody. The love gospel and lordship salvation. Those are the three strains. And I'm not going to do it. But the one in the middle, um, the love gospel one seems to be the one that's pervasive right now. These people don't know God. And see, we who adhere to the scriptures. John 16, verses 1 on verse 3. This is what Paul thought he was doing. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And as you can see, it's gotten dark by the time we started this. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. Especially if you're a Trinitarian, you don't know who the Father is. <laughs> He's the first person in a three-person Trinity. I say this to you again. To hell with your Trinity. It's satanic. You don't know who the Father is. You don't know who God is. Oh, you only know about God because you read about him. Yeah? But do you know him through a relationship personally? How can you believe when you seek honor that cometh, uh, when you seek honor one of another and seeketh not the honor that cometh from God only? Go back to Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. And note how he started this dissertation. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you? In Acts chapter 26 verse 8. 
that God should raise the dead. It's obvious that Paul, what his snagging point was, was that he couldn't get, why Jesus is raised from the dead? Remember Peter? He had to have three times a sheet let down with all unclean animals. And the Lord said, Arise, Peter, kill and eat. It had to happen three times for him to get it. Okay? Now, picking up in Acts chapter 26, uh, at verse 12. Whereupon I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, because he was zealous of the traditions of his fathers. How could these people be falling for this lunacy that Jesus died, buried, and rose again third day according to the scriptures? How could they fall for this? He lets you know that's what his mindset before his conversion was. Because he says, Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that, the, that God should raise the dead? And then he follows it up with verse 9. I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Yeah, because he was dead before Paul was converted. But look what it took. At mid, verse 13, At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun, shining round, round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue. I've run into some Muslims who said Jesus never spoke Hebrew. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard to pray. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Uh, on that, really quickly, Ephesians chapter five, Ephesians chapter five, verse thirty. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. So, for get a load of this: these devils who attack you, who attack me. They can't attack Christ. But since I am part of the church of the living God, I am part of his body, they can attack me. Hence, what are they doing? They're attacking Christ's body, the church of the living God. They're attacking Christ. These people are not saved, brethren. There's a difference between one who is ignorant as a false convert and these who are infiltrators. Okay? Never converts to begin with. They hate Christ. <laughs> Even though they like to think that they do, they, that they love Christ, they want you to believe that they do, that they're championing causes with all these heretics. No, they're the heretics. You need to watch out for these people. They're liars. They're liars. They're bold-faced liars, all of them. It's all they do. It's all they can do because their father is Satan. Verse 15, and I said unto, and I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan unto God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. But shoot first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. 
For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and would have and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue on to this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. That Christ should suffer, and that he should be the first that should raise from the dead, and should shew light unto the people, and to the Gentiles. The resurrection of the dead, I believe, was what the big thing that Paul had a problem with before the Lord came to him. It took Paul, who was a Jew, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. The Jews require a sign, okay? It took the Lord personally appearing to Paul, personally appearing to him, for Paul to be converted. So what died? We saw that Paul was zealous of the traditions of his fathers. He was, he was zealous, okay? And he was exceedingly mad against the church of the living God. Exceedingly mad. He was blazing with insanity for the for how how dare these people do contrary to the law, to the traditions. But what broke him? Seeing God personally. And see, when you have a personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's going to break your opinions, your categories. He is a God that induces death in order to save you. He died that he might save you. You have to die to your ideas, to your principles, to your morals, to your um, opinions. You have to die to all those things when it comes into context of who God is. And what he expects of you. Do we not see it obviously evident in Paul? Who was ignorant until he was shown better? As we looked at in the first video. With these Athenians. Paul. They didn't know what they were doing. They didn't even know if they were worshipping a true God. They were not of the church of the living God. No way. But see. They were superstitious. They had a shoe of religion. They were worshiping something that they thought was God. They didn't know who God was. Him, God, Paul declared unto them who God really was. And that they weren't serving the true God to begin with. See, they were ignorant. And as you would read in Acts chapter 17, some mocked, but some wanted more. And, and, and let's look at that. Let's look at that in Acts chapter 17. Go back to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. When we read about in verses 30 and 31. About how at the times of this ignorance God winked at. But now commandeth every, all men everywhere to repent. Why? Because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. Because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that he hath raised him from the dead. Check this out. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked. And others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed from the, among them. Albeit certain men clave unto him. Certain men clave unto him. And believed. Among the which was Dionysus, the Aeropagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. Whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house. Who You have ears to hear, let him hear. See? Some mock, oh, we'll hear again. We need to hear more. Others is like, dude, <laughs> clung, clave on the Paul. Dude, what do we got to do? What's going on here, man? Talk to me. 
Tell me, did this is, you know, they weren't ignorant anymore, you see. When those, when you come across those who are truly ignorant, you have to have compassion on them. You have to be long-suffering with them. And um, God is the one who needs to bring about a death. And there is no greater death than the death of your coveted opinion, is there? What you think is right. What you think God is. What you think you need to do. You know where that comes from? Want to know where that comes from? Genesis chapter 3. In the false convert, whether they be ignorant or whether they are deceiving and being deceived. You know, evil men waxing worse and worse. Okay? One of the two. Ignorant or deceiver. There is this within them. Paul was zealous of the traditions of his fathers. What he thought the, his fathers taught was absolutely right. Nothing wrong in them. But it took the Lord appearing to Paul to destroy all his categories, all his traditions, everything that he held dear to his heart. Destroyed just like that. When the Lord appeared unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Who art thou, Lord? I am Jesus whom you, whom you are persecuting. The risen Christ. See, God knows how to break you. He knows how to put his finger on that very thing. But it's never at gunpoint, dear friend. It's never at gunpoint. Never. What does the false convert need? The false convert knows knows about the death, burial, and resurrection. They know these things. They heard. They know. But there needs to be a death there. Again, this all comes back to repentance of your self-righteousness, which every single one of these wicked lost devils that I have named in this two-part video all have that self-righteousness still within them. Well, Brad, you struggle with pride. Yes, I do. But see, the Lord brought me to himself through the Romans road. Okay? And when it came to Romans chapter 3, uh, verses 9, under verse 18, oh boy, you talk about taking skin off of my hide. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm a sinner who is chief. I can't blame other people for what I have done, the way I've behaved, what I've thought. And in order for the Lord to save you, you have to die to your own self-opinion. You have to die to yourself. You really do. And until you do that, boy, you can blame as many people as you want. You can have all the sorrow that you want, but see, in the fact that you're still blaming others, son, Like I said, the young Scotsman was a tragedy, a travesty, a true travesty. And I, and I have, uh, in the previous video to this and in other videos, I, I openly, it's like, yeah, I should have rebuked him. I should have rebuked you. I should have. Forgive me for not doing that. But how did you go on after a, how did you continue? What have, what have you become? What have you become? But you, you want to know what this is? Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 under verse 5. Now the serpent, who was Satan, who is Satan, excuse me, was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, 
lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Paul, before his conversion, what was good and evil? He was his own judge to what was good and evil, wasn't he? Even though he was zealous of the traditions of his fathers, man told him what was good and evil. He was zealous. But see, this is what has to die in you. I don't know what is good except what the Lord tells me. I don't know what is evil except what the Lord tells me. I don't know how to go about living an appropriate life according to the scriptures unless God tells me. You can't do this without God. And see, what has to die in you, dear friend, is exactly this. Because see, you're a false convert. You're ignorant. You don't know better. So that's one thing. Okay. Okay. But you're given the truth to cure your ignorance. What do you do with it? Hmm? Or if you're an infiltrator, <laughs> you're pretty much hopeless. And with some of these devils whom I have mentioned, um, even if the Lord himself appeared unto them, what are you going to do? Oh, it was his fault that I did this? Son, come on now. Come on now. This is ultimately, verse 5. For God doth know that in the day ye shall, in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open. Don't you devils claim to have your eyes open, right? Yeah, yeah. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You're your own God. You're your own judge. And that has to die. And until that dies in you, brethren, until that dies in you, false convert, you really aren't, you really don't have too much hope for you. There really isn't too much that can happen for you. You have to be brought unto a death of yourself. You truly do. Because when Paul, when he saw the Lord, go to Acts chapter 9. Go to Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Let's read that. Okay? Acts chapter 9. Now, we already read about how the Lord appeared to him. Let's pick up in Acts chapter 9, beginning at verse 10. On to verse 18. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight. And inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. And has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Looking at verse 11, it says, For behold, he prayeth. Paul is zealous for the traditions of his fathers. Put people in prison of the church of God. He put them in prison, gave, their, gave his voice unto their death. Follow them, went into strange cities to kill the church of the living God, 
to haul them off to prison because he thought he was doing what was right. Then along comes the Lord and just shatters everything for him. Can you imagine what, what was he praying? Sitting there blind. Hmm? You ever thought about that? Wow, I can't believe how wrong I was. Everything, everything that I've been zealous about has been wrong. The scriptures that I've had all this time right there have told me, but I've been blinded because of the tradition of the fathers. I've been blinded because I valued man more than the Lord. And see, it took the Lord appearing to Saul. And we know what Saul would become Paul. But see, that death to his categories, that death unto himself, to his opinion, to his ideas, to his principles, to become a new creature. See, do you even understand what it means to be a new creature? You're a new creature. Old things are passed away. You used to be okay with certain things, but then you die and come to the Lord broken, contrite, and in fear of him, call upon his name. See, this you devils don't get. Okay? Kraken, you went from a Pfeniger <coughs> supporter to a Denlinerite to uh, neither one now. Three times. Okay? A little unstable like to see. Are you, huh? Aaron. Aaron. Okay, you messed up. Get right with the Lord, get saved. But no, you twist. And then you go in a totally different direction from the truth that you were preaching before. Come on, guys. And your deception. I believe the fourth dimension, my dear young Scotsman, I believe that's you. I believe that's you. I could be wrong. It could be that other kid from Belgium who's really crazy. Okay? Could be him. Could be anyone. Could be John. It could be Beelzebub of Blackpool, for all I know. But see, that's the way these people operate. Okay? See, when you encounter Christ... There ought to be a death of yourself. I don't think any of you, the devils I have named, and all you coadjutor scum, I don't think any of you have ever had an encounter with the living God, our Father, Jesus Christ. I don't think you have. I don't think you have. And if you have, it's made you worse. Why is that? His demand is not that difficult. It's painful, but it is not that difficult. What is his demand? Die. Die to yourself. Blame only yourself because you're the only one to blame. Look at this in Acts chapter 9 again. Verse 13. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints of Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Oh, if one of these devils could truly get saved and turn on their order. What a, what a wonderful thing that would be in the times that we are living in. Not holding my breath, but it would sure be nice to see one of these devils 
turn on their order and start talking about the Jesuits. Start talking about the, the uh, provincials on YouTube like Mark Hunter. Okay? Can I prove that to you? No, I can't prove that to you. That's just my, my belief. Okay? Hmm. I hope, I hope that one of you break free from that iron grip that Satan has you in and come to the Lord on his terms because your destination is hell and there ain't nothing you're going to do about it unless the Lord save you. Verse 16. For I will shew him how, many, how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias, and Ananias went his way and entered into the house and put his hands on him and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. See, his categories, his, his, his opinions, his principles, his ideas which were based off of his zealousness for the traditions of the fathers, was put to death the day that he met Jesus. You want to see the, uh, the example of someone, though? Now, see, Paul was in ignorance. And look what became... He was first Saul, but then he became Paul. Let's look at someone the opposite of Paul in Acts chapter 8, shall we? Acts chapter 8. <laughs> We're going to be looking at Shimon the sorcerer, which these stupid, easy believism heretics say this guy was saved because he believed. They, they have to say that in order to maintain their heresy. Okay? Shimon the sorcerer here in Acts chapter 8 was not a saved man. We'll prove it. Okay? Acts chapter 8. Here is the contrary to the ignorance that was in Paul. Acts chapter 8. Beginning at verse 9. On to... Verse 24. But there was a certain man called Shimon, which before a time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. Just like all these devils. Like Beelzebub of Blackpool with his purchased thousand subscribers, that he's some great one. The Kraken, that he's some great one. And so on and so forth. Okay? They all some great one. Yeah. Yeah. And they use and they bewitch people with sorcery. Yeah. Uh, Jedi uh, word tricks. To whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest saying this man is the great power of God. And to him they and to him they had regard because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Shimon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, oh, he believed and was baptized, huh? Wow. Kind of like in uh, how we read uh, earlier about in the book of John, those who believed on Jesus and at the end of the whole thing, they were going to kill him. Yeah, but they believed. <laughs> yeah, but when, okay, then uh, verse 13, then Shimon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered 
beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. The name, singular, only one name. There is only one name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. That is the name of Jesus Christ. So, if you're going to baptize someone, I personally believe you baptize them in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, these three are one. And there's only one name. You figure that one out. Let's continue. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when... Now, check this out. And when Shimon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Why? Why did he offer them money? Saying... Give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Look at verse 19, or verse 9. But there was a certain man called Shimon, which before time in the same city used sorcery, and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. Verse 10. To whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that of a long time he had bewitched them through sorceries. But along comes Philip, preaching Jesus. So he was in danger of being dethroned. So, he believed because of what he saw. He, he was baptized also. Okay? Okay? And according to these... Pentecatholics, that it's Acts 2.38. Be quiet. Be quiet about that. We'll talk about that in another video, uh, oh God willing. But he, he believed and he was baptized. But yet when it came to receiving the Holy Ghost, he offered them money. Why? Saying, give me, this, uh, give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Why would he want that kind of power to give people the Holy Ghost? Because he wants to see the glory of God to serve him? No, to better himself, to regain what he obviously saw he was going to lose, that he couldn't bewitch the people anymore. But he believed, and he was baptized even. And these easy believism devils want you to believe that this man was saved because he believed. Hardly. No. Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The uh, devils also believe and tremble. Mm -hmm. Remember, it's by grace, through faith. Not that you save yourself because you believe. You're a thief and a robber going up another way. Just like Shimon the sorcerer was. He had no intention for living for the Lord or spreading the gospel or anything. No, he just wanted to promote himself. He didn't die to himself. But Peter said unto him, someone who ought to have known dying to self, thy money perish with thee, because that thou hast thought that the gift of God, the gift of God, might, may be purchased with money. And right here, Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. It is an issue of the heart. Now, repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness, and pray God. Personal accountability. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief, Personal accountability and responsibility. 
Repent therefore of this, thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness, because he lost his position, and in the bond of iniquity, because he used sorcery and bewitched people. Then answered Shimon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of, those, none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. Why would he ask Peter to pray for him instead of him praying to the Lord himself? Don't, don't, don't believe these devils who tell you that this man was saved because he believed. He was not saved at all. He was not saved at all. And if I'm not mistaken, his, uh, historically, this Shimon guy had something to do with Gnosticism, if I'm not mistaken. One of you, correct me in the uh, comment section on that, if you will. Okay? But see now, <laughs> we see a contrast here. Paul was ignorant. And when the Lord came to him, he was converted. Shimon! He wasn't ignorant. He knew exactly what he was doing. He believed and he was baptized. But see, he sought for all the wrong reasons. There was no death of self. Which one are you? And he asked Peter to pray for him. He didn't go to the Lord himself. No personal accountability or no responsibility. You do it. It's someone else's fault. You see, in Hebrews chapter 4, in Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews, Brad, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, one verse, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, soul, spirit, joints and marrow. Uh, man is a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? That's, he's describing a person there. Okay? And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It all comes down to Scripture. It all comes down to Scripture. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Search the Scriptures daily whether these things were so. Mm -hmm. But note, a two-edged sword piercing, a stab, even to the dividing asunder, dividing, slice, so you see piercing and dividing asunder. Our Lord came not to send, bring peace, but a sword. Hmm. A sword? What am I getting at? <laughs> Go to Acts chapter 2. I've talked to you, you th about this before. Acts chapter 2. Verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in the heart, in their heart, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? What shall we do? They were pricked in the heart. A prick, okay? You know, you take a thumbtack and you prick your finger, a little blood comes out. Hurts, yeah, but just a little blood comes out. It's a prick. Pierce. You know, you could call it a piercing. You know, you pierce your skin. You know, a little pricking like that. And when these people's hearts were pricked, what the, look at what that, just look at that one verse. Now, when they heard this, what Peter was talking about, how it's, it was on to you, this was given. But you guys put them on the tree. And it's on to you. The promise is on to you. Okay? Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, piercing, 
okay? And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? What shall we do? What's the contrast to that, though? Hmm? What's the contrast to that? I got to get my place back in Hebrews chapter 4. Okay, beg your pardon, brethren. Hebrews chapter 4, okay. What's the contrast to this? Acts chapter 7, verse 54. Acts chapter 7, verse 54. When Stephen gave his rundown unto the Jews in Acts chapter 7, and uh, he finally came out and said unto them, called them stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, how you always do resist the Holy Ghost. Okay, gave him later quite a sermon on him. Verse 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. And what did they do? Not, they didn't ask, what, what, what do we do? Because they were pricked, but they were cut. If you prick your finger, a little blood comes out. If you get cut, a lot of blood comes out. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing, okay, even to, even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. And, right here, is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. When these guys in Acts chapter 7 were presented with truth, they were cut to the heart. And what happened when they were cut to the heart? And they gnashed on him with their teeth and they killed him. But in Acts chapter 2, verse 37, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? See, they were ignorant. What shall we do? Acts chapter 7. They had the rundown. Look who he was talking to. Okay? Look who he who was he talking to? Remember, they were he was talking to only Jews in Acts chapter 2. Thank you very much. Okay. But it was before in Acts chapter 7. Then said the high priest, Are these things so? He stood before the council while Peter stood before the common people. Stephen stood before the council. The men, like we addressed in the first part of this video, who ought to have known these things. And here's little old busboy Stephen telling them what they already knew, but they missed it. Hence, they were cut to the heart. You were altogether born in iniquities, and now you're teaching us? Which one are you? Is your heart pricked by the truth? Or is your heart cut by the truth? Which one is it? Your heart is pricked by the truth. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Your heart is cut by the truth. And I've seen this happen many times with people who I thought were friends. And thank God that he was merciful and showed, uh, they, they ain't your brethren, they ain't your friends. Hmm. Amen. They ain't. They never were. Never will be. Even if you were to get saved, if you truly get saved, good for, praise the Lord. You, you, what could have been has been destroyed. So stay away. Which one are you? Which one are you, dear friend? Which one are you? Go to Matthew chapter 7. Let's, rest. Let's wrap this up. <laughs> this is a little longer. Uh, I'm, I'm quite sure this is not what you uh, thought it was going to be. 
But this is what the Lord wanted me to speak about. We went through several things together, the Lord and I, and uh, this is what this is what He wanted me to talk to you about. Because going forward, brethren, this this thing about the falling away, about they were not they were uh, they were not all of us, okay. <laughs> this thing about the falling away, these people being made manifest that they are not all of us. That's going forward in 2022. That's going to be a big thing. It's going to be a really big thing. You watch. But Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 on to verse 27. <laughs> Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. Talking about Christ talking about himself and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock no other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid which is laid and that foundation is Jesus Christ he is the rock which the church is built upon not Peter and everyone that heareth these saints of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man who lives as if there is no God, which built his house upon the sand. Sand is a collection of minuscule little rocks, little pebbles, little stones, little stones. Like Peter, he was just a little stone. Well, Jesus Christ, God our Father, is the rock, okay? And the rain descended and the floods came, and the winds blew and built upon that house and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. See, all these devils, all these fakes, they have their foundation built, their house is built on sand. Because they're working for the Vatican in one way or the other. They're not built on the foundation of Christ. So eventually these people are going to fall, and every single time they shoot themselves in the foot, give them time. They will get ferocious. Oh, they'll get pretty ferocious after these come out. And of course, but you see, you see, look at, look at how they've been behaving. Which is your foundation built on? And Matthew 21 Matthew 21 now, verses 28 on to verse 32. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. He came to the second and said likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether of them twain did the will of his father, they say unto him, the first, Jesus saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. And this is in the book of Matthew. He specifically says the kingdom of God not the kingdom of heaven, denoting the difference between the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God can be a reference unto the kingdom of heaven, but kingdom of God is usually referring unto the spiritual, while kingdom of heaven is the actual physical, okay? The kingdom that's going to be in Jerusalem. Look at that verse. Look at those verses right there. Which one are you? John chapter 9, John chapter 9, verses 35 on to verse 41. See how we did that? Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, 
thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. And Jesus said, For judgment am I come into this world, that they which see not might see, and they that and that they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words, and said unto him, Are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, if ye were blind, ignorant, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, we see. Therefore, your sin remaineth. Brethren, the times that are coming... 2021, 2021 was a horrendous year. It was a year of many blessings for those of the Church of the Living God. And so many of you, thank you for your prayers. Thank you for helping us and thank you. And we pray for many of you and we can hope that the Lord will continue to do as he has done. But you need to remember going forward, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. The Jesuits cannot let this go. They have to keep it up. And when it comes to those who are claiming, when it comes to those who are claiming that they are of the church of the living God, okay, <laughs> we got to remember this. In 1 John again, chapter 2, verse 19, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. This is the falling away. And until we get redeemed, brethren, the falling away is just going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. I personally trust very few people. Very few. And it is at the point now... Um, If I don't know who you are, know your testimony, or spent any time in fellowship with you at all, I'm probably going to keep my distance from you. Because we have learned through experience that when you bring new people in who you don't even know over a year, they can do a lot of damage to you and bring a lot of heartache and pain upon you. We want to avoid that. I trust very, very few people. Very few. The ones I do trust, you know who you are. You know who you are. There are some who I trust who I do not, I'm not able to talk to too often because of certain things, but um, you got to watch out who you trust, brother. And you also got to be aware that going forward, with what the Jesuits have planned. Wow, it got dark really quick, didn't it? Wow. <laughs> but with what the Jesuits have planned to bring about, their agents are going to be very busy. And their agents are going to be constantly attacking those of us who are truly saved of the Church of the Living God. And those who are saved of the Church of the Living God, these coadjutors are going to insert themselves into the narrative to bring about strife, confusion, contention, accusation. The accuser of the brethren? Be aware of these things, brethren. And the people that I have mentioned, watch out for these guys. If you believe what these devils tell you, then that's, that's your problem, your fault. Okay? Not the, like I said, this is not the year in review video that I had originally intended. <laughs> but this is what, this is what the Lord wanted. And um, that's going to be it for this video. And it's uh, now 5.45 p.m. my time here. 
So this is going to about four hours it's going to take to get these uh, videos uploaded. I don't like doing two part videos, but anyway, thank and thank you, brethren. Um, I know it's been quite a, a while since uh, uh, the last upload, but told you I was going to do that for this purpose. And um, yeah, so that's going to be it for this video. Thank you, Church of the Living God, our brothers, our sisters who pray for us. Uh, please continue to pray for us. Thank you for all of those who have helped us. Thank you. And we love you. And unto my enemies. I know you guys want to be named. I'm aware of this. I know you want that notoriety. I know you want that. But I'm going to start naming more. I'm not going to do like you guys do. I'm not going to have a video of somebody like that, uh, like what you guys do, and take things out of context. And but you, No, 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 no. Here's my weapon. Try to defend against it there, tough guy. So, we love you. We will see you next year, which is in literally a couple of hours. Oh, in about six hours. Six and some odd, some odd minutes. So, thank you so much for watching if you do. Bye-bye.